And now look to Mogens Lichtov to continue the case for the opposition. Thank you very much for this opportunity to have a very important discussion about the deficiencies and necessity of the United Nations. I will not contradict any argument brought forward about the deficiencies of the past. But I think uh, Dina gave a very good presentation of what the UN also is and is supposed to be. I think it's uh, an extreme, in, in, in historical terms, it's an extremely uh, positive step forward that it exists at all. That the 193 governments of this world are uh, bound to discuss with each other in a forum. All are represented. It's not like it was with the League of Nations that never at the same time the big players were present uh, in the League of Nations. Uh, and we have in the United Nations a number of organizations, funds and programs that do a marvelous job uh, uh, on a global basis. And talking about containing and ending conflicts, we know all the deficiencies, all the increasing number of wars and conflicts that the United Nations uh, has not been equipped with the authority to stop. And we are dealing with it, we have been dealing with uh, Ambassador uh, Mansour and I in the past year, uh, with all the humanitarian catastrophes and refugee problems following uh, these unsolved conflicts. That's for sure the worst part of the picture of what the United Nations is not being authorized to solve. But on the other hand, we have to remember that we have 120,000 people in UN peacekeeping operations around the world and that the number of unsolved conflicts uh, would be even much uh, higher if we didn't do that. But the bottom line here is the United Nations will never be stronger than the membership allows it to be. And the peacekeeping authority of the United Nations will never be stronger than what the Security Council can agree upon. So don't blame the United Nations. Blame those who veto action for instance, on solving the Palestinian conflict. But the UN took upon itself to do that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally understand your point, but, 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 but uh, the question of Palestine is unfortunately also a domestic United States problem for, us, for all of us. Uh, we have had in the past eight years an American president that actually realizes that not only do the United Nations need the US, but also that the US needs the United Nations. And the risk of this organization really failing is what is happening in the transition on the 20th of January next year. It is paradoxical that in a year with all the unsolved conflicts and deficiencies, the United Nations also took very far-reaching positive decisions on sustainable development and climate. Showed us the way forward for the common efforts to preserve this globe and future generations from some of the most existential problems we are facing. Uh, I think uh, the, Sec the Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations, General Leerson, has put it in a very right way. He says, there is no plan B because there's no planet B. We have to act, we have to understand, as it is expressed in the Sustainable Development Goals, that we will not be able to eradicate extreme poverty, hunger, create education and health services for every global citizen if we follow the same path as we have followed in the past 70 years or the past 15 years. We have to do it quite differently, and we have to integrate the fight against poverty with the fight against increasing inequality within countries and between countries. And we have to integrate the fight 
against poverty and inequality with the fight against environmental catastrophes and climate change. This is a very, very transformative, revolutionary analysis, and it gives us, and all the governments of the United Nations accepted this, it gives us the tools, the direction to act together to avoid that next generation will be faced with even more unstable, unharmonious uh, environment than we are having right now. Well, the hope of Paris, now I just came today from Morocco. Yeah. Uh, there is danger now the, in the election. The best we can hope, which was also, I think, the message out of Morocco uh, at the COP22, is that all of us, all the rest of us, the majority of Americans that really didn't vote for Donald Trump, the Latin Americans, the Asians, the Africans, Europeans, will stick together and say, this we have to do. This we have to do. Uh, because talking about climate change, climate change is one of the 17 sustainable development goals, but it's the most urgent one. And that's why it's so important that we have strong commitments that we made in Paris last December, the, most, the, the greatest leap forward in this discussion ever. And we have to maintain the pressure. Because if we don't stop global warming, the generation strongest represented in this room will face that it is not 65 million people displaced from home because of conflict. It will be hundreds of millions of people displaced because of rising sea levels, desertification, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, melting down of glaciers that provide uh, drinking water for a billion people. And this will create new conflicts. It will soak up all the resources we could dream of for eradicating poverty. And the scientific community tells us we haven't got much time. So we have to act, and I think it's one of the biggest achievements of the United Nations in recent years that this is crystal clear described and that each and every government has signed in up till now. But of course, it will take, yes, I, and I think another point, which is improving the works, the workings of the United Nations these years is, that this ambitious program of sustainable development was only possible because of a much, much stronger involvement of civil society around the world than we ever had before. Uh, and we had to rely in the future also of much stronger involvement of all of us in the workings of the United Nations. We did an extra step in that direction with a new process of selecting a Secretary General during the past year. For the first time in UN history, it was not only the powerful few in the Security Council, in the back uh, room, dark, smoky back room in the past, selected the name for the next Secretary General, and it was rubber stamped by the General Assembly. This year, what happened was that we were able, for the first time in UN history, to integrate all the member states in important hearings of each and every candidate and get the Security Council, who has the power to bring forward proposal for the General Assembly, uh, 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 we, we got them to accept that they could not start discussion before we had the hearings in the General Assembly, and they could not discuss other names than the ones that had been presented, had uh, 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 been asking questions by the General Assembly. And what happened was that this was a quite new process that also involved Lots of people outside the UN walls, lots of meetings with the candidates. We had also in the UN a General Assembly Hall in mid-July, uh, a town hall meeting that was, trans uh, was transmitted worldwide with hundreds of millions of people being able to make up their own minds. And the, the very best thing about it, in my view, is that it led to the election of the best man. That while we have from New Year, Antonio Guterres, as the Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, with his huge experience of 10 years at the UN uh, High Commissioner for, for Refugees, uh, and with a mandate 
that is in reality much stronger than any secretary general before him because it was the whole world actually taking part in this. Uh, and the good thing about it was that none of the permanent members tried to stop the election of the best man. So there are great hopes for the UN in the future uh, and there are great hopes that we can expand even further uh, the participation of each and mem every member state, revitalize the General Assembly, but also uh, encourage the outside world to participate in the necessary work of strengthening the United Nations and overcoming all the deficiencies we all know about of the past. Thank you.